What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking another look at the Ioneo Air. This is an awesome handheld from Ioneo. But this time we're actually going to be turning this into a full-fledged desktop PC. Because in this video we're going to be testing this handheld out in docked mode. Now first and foremost, this is meant to be a handheld gaming PC, but there's really nothing stopping us from connecting this to a larger display and using it as a full-fledged desktop. These x86 handhelds nowadays are offering a lot of power, and for some, they can get quite expensive. So I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are kind of on the fence about picking one of these up. You know, you definitely want a handheld gaming PC, but you'd also like to use it as your everyday desktop, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. So if you're not familiar with the Ioneo Air, this is a 6-core, 12-thread Ryzen CPU. We've got two USB Type-C ports. These are full function 3.2 ports and we can do display out. So this is exactly how we're going to be connecting it to a larger display, be it a monitor or a television. But before we get started here, I do want to give you a quick rundown on what I'm using for my accessories. When it comes to a controller, I personally love the Gillikit King Kong Pro. This is the white version that was just released. It looks absolutely amazing and works really, really well. I've got a Bluetooth Razer mouse and when it comes to the keyboard here, this is a NuFi Air 75, but you might notice this is Ioneo branded. This is actually a special edition Ioneo Air 75 from NuFi. I've been using these NuFi keyboards for a little while now and absolutely love them. It connects over Bluetooth or 2.4 GHz dongle. And in order to connect the Ioneo Air to a larger display, I've got this HDMI dock. So this is USB Type-C to HDMI. We can also charge it up to 45 watts. And it's also got three USB 3.0 ports on it. These are relatively cheap on Amazon, and this was actually designed for the Steam Deck, but it does work well with the Air. You can also opt to use an inexpensive USB Type-C to HDMI adapter. I'll leave a link in the description in case you're interested in picking something up. Super easy to get this connected. I'm just going to place it in the dock, plug in that USB Type-C cable, wait a few seconds to detect that signal, and I've actually got this set up to automatically just display everything on the larger screen. But there's several ways you can go about this. You could have it mirror the display so both of them are working, or you could use it as a secondary display. It's really up to you. But since I want to turn it into a desktop PC, this is how I have mine set up right now. And just in case you're interested in having both displays going, as you can see, it is working. Uh, one thing I actually really like about this new Fi keyboard is we do have that Ioneo button, and it does bring up Aya space. So from here, we can actually change the resolution. We can change the TDP and everything like that. We've even got a game launcher built in, but it's pretty cool to have the keyboard with that button ready to go. I'll give you a quick rundown on the specs of the Air. For the CPU, we've got the Ryzen 5 5560U, six cores, 12 threads, and it is based on Zen 3. We've also got 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM and the built-in Radeon 6 graphics at 1600 megahertz. And with those specs, it actually offers a really nice little desktop experience. With something like this, if you want to do some web browsing, some email checking, some document editing, you're not going to have any issues with it. We do have Wi-Fi 6 built in, so everything loads up really quickly. And if it came down to it, you could always get an Ethernet adapter. But yeah, I mean, it does offer plenty of power for a little desktop PC. Another thing I wanted to show off was a little bit of YouTube video playback. So this is only a 1080p monitor, but it will do 4K60 out of that USB Type-C. I'm still going to set this video to 4K60. And at 12 watts, 720, 1080, and even 4K video playback runs really well, whether you want to stream it or run it from an external device or the internal storage. So in handheld mode from IS Space, we have the option to go from 5 watts up to 12 watts. And right in between there, you can go to 8. Great for indie gaming. Personally, in handheld mode, I like running this at 15. It really does open it up. But when I'm in dock mode or desktop mode like this, I usually have it plugged into a power adapter just to keep that battery up. So I don't have to worry about battery life. And I actually like taking this up to around 22 to 23 watts. And the built-in cooling system can handle it. I was actually really impressed. I was hoping we could do 30 in dock mode, but it does thermal throttle quite quickly depending on what you're doing, given the form factor of the handheld itself. But for me, the sweet spot is around 23 watts, and while gaming at 23 watts on this in dock mode, it offers a really nice experience. So first up, we've got Forza Horizon 5. We're at 1080p low, and we do get a few dips under 60 here. I actually averaged 62 FPS, but as you saw, it did go down to around 58. In some areas, you will see that. So what I did was just take it down to 900p, and the performance gain is definitely noticeable. 
We can now get an average of around 73 FPS out of this game at 900p low. Very playable, and personally I still think it looks absolutely amazing at 900p. Next on the list we've got Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I'm at 1080p low settings and we can get a constant 60 out of it. With these fighting games you definitely want that constant 60. Another one I tested was Street Fighter V and with that we can actually do 1080p with a low medium mix and just run it all day. You might notice that the air is kind of on its side right now and that's because I did need to access that other USB Type-C port because I've got a USB Type-C SSD here that has a lot of games installed on it. And of course, when it comes to indie games, you don't need to push this kind of power. I mean, it's going to handle most of the indie games that are on Steam right now. But, uh, you know, unlocked with something like the Art of Rally at medium settings, 1080p, we're pulling 20 watts. And this will jump up to around 150 FPS, but with V-Sync on, we're only going to be pulling around 12 watts, even though I have it set up for around 23. Moving over to some harder to run AAA games, here we have God of War, 720p, FSR set to performance, and we're at original settings. I've locked this at 30 FPS because no matter what we do, even if we were running this at 35 watts, we're not going to run this game at 60 FPS. So I'd say 30 FPS is pretty good with original settings, or if you did want to run this at a constant 40, you could drop it down to low. But even at 30 FPS on a little setup like this is still pretty decent. Cyberpunk 2077 did way better than I thought it was going to do. We're at 720p, FSR set to performance, and we can get an average of around 56 FPS out of this game. Now if we turn FSR to ultra performance, we can run this at 60 with V-Sync turned on, but I just think it downscales it way too much at ultra performance and everything is just super jaggy. And you know I had to throw some OG Skyrim in here. We're at high settings, 1080p, looking really good here, playing at a constant 60. This is one of those games I always keep locked. I mean, you can actually unlock it if you want to from the config file, but 60 is perfect with this game and it plays just fine on this system. With Elden Ring, at 720p low, we can average 41 FPS. Now, a lot of people have been playing this on the Steam Deck, and I haven't actually tested it in a little while, but last time I checked at 720p with the low settings, I was getting an average of around 47 FPS out of this game. And finally, for the PC gaming side of things, we've got My Friend Peppa Pig. So this is a really intense game. I mean, it definitely takes a lot of power to run it. We're at 1080p Ultra, and I'm getting over 150 FPS. Last time I tried this on my main gaming rig, which has a 3080 Ti, I couldn't even run this at 5 FPS at 180p. So yeah, I mean, this thing is definitely pushing some power. In my opinion, this is kind of like Crisis was back in the day. If you can run My Friend Peppa Pig, then you've got a powerful little setup. And the final thing I wanted to show off here was a little bit of PS3 emulation at this higher wattage. This is a harder one to emulate. We've got Skate 3 here, and I'm using RPCS 3. I did see a couple dips every once in a while down to around 55, and I think we could fix that by taking the TDP up a little more. But as you can see, our CPU temperature is already almost at 86 degrees Celsius. So going up to around 26 watts on this would probably thermal throttle us, but I was kind of impressed to see this running at 20 watts this well. So yeah, the Ioneo Air can be turned into a full-fledged desktop, and I completely understand that first and foremost, this is a portable handheld gaming console. I know that, you know that, but there are some people out there that are going to put their money down on something like this and they might not have extra to, you know, pick up a laptop or a desktop. So yeah, I mean, the Air can be used just like this. Now you don't need a super fancy keyboard or a super fancy controller or even a super fancy HDMI to USB Type-C dock to get this working. You can use what you got and maybe pick up a cheaper USB Type-C to HDMI dock and get this up and running on a bigger monitor. I've got a few suggestions and I'll leave some links in the description. But yeah, I mean, it definitely works out really well, and we don't have to worry about battery life because we're basically in docked mode, and we can take that TDP up and get a little better performance out of this system.
So if you're interested in learning more about the Air, I will leave a link to the website and their Indiegogo in the description. I've also created a couple other videos. If you want to check those out, they'll be on screen right now. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.